that God is alive. So I want to talk to you in the next few minutes under this topic, look up and live. Look up and live. Look at the person next to you and say, look up and live. Don't look around. Don't look at your friends. Don't look at your neighbors. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't mind your circumstances. All that I'm saying, when it is tough, there is one thing that you need to do. And it's to look up, not pansy, not the sightini, but to look up and to what, Pastor Luane, and leave. Now, those of you who have watched us and followed my style of preaching, I am like this preacher, you know, who's acting a movie. You know, when you go to the movie, they show you the end from the beginning. They give you the nuggets, right what's going to happen in the end. So that even if you miss the movie in the middle, but you know how this story will end. So I want to give you your nuggets. I want to give you, you know, your portion. I want to give you your food before we start ministering. Here is your nuggets. Here is my intention of this sermon this morning, Akaya. If you are writing down, number one, life is 10% what happens to you. And 90% how you react to it. Did you hear what I said? Whatever happens in life, it is 10%. All the things that you are going through in life you are facing, it is 10%. 90% is how you react to it. Doesn't matter what happened, but 90% is how you react to it. You must always remember that. Number two, number two, Bamba. Don't focus on the adversity. Focus on God. No matter what you go through, be the best you can be. Did you grab that one, Basalwan? He point lack, I'm yanking near my point. He point lack, don't focus on the adversity. Don't focus on the problems. Don't focus on the challenges. Focus on God. No matter what you go through right now, be the best you can be. Number three, Bamba. God has hung the destiny of human race on the cross. It's through exaltation of him that our destiny is unleashed. Everything that you need is on the cross. Your success is on the cross. Your future is on the cross. Your blessings is on the cross. God has hung the destiny of human race on the cross. It's through exaltation of him that our destiny is unleashed. Learn the secret of worshiping God. When you are going through tough times, you don't complain. But you learn the secret of worship. Do you remember Paul and Silas? Because they understood that their blessing is in praise and worship. Their blessing is when they exalt the living God. If you want to see God at work, you know what you do? Even in the midst of the challenges, you just get into your room. You begin to worship him. You begin to exalt him. Yes, You are opening the fridge. There are no food in the fridge but you choose not to complain you choose to worship that is how God releases your blessings number four evil is a reminder of the fallen world we live in but it's also an invitation to seek God's enabling power to face life did you hear what I said I say evil is a reminder that we are in a fallen world. When we are facing evil, it's just a reminder that we are not in heaven yet. Imagine if we could live in this world without evil. Some of us wouldn't even pray. Why should I worship God? Why should I pray? If there is nothing that is threatening us. You see African the way they pray. It is because <laughs> if you want African people to pray, threaten them with tokolosh. And as to tokolosh in English, what is it? Praise the name of Jesus. 
And then number five, and we go to the word of God. Every time it feels like the world is out of control, all you have to do is to do what, Pastor Luane? Is to look up and remember there is God who is in control. Did you hear what I said, Pastor Luane? Did you hear what I said? Every time it feels like things are not going right, remember this. God is still in control. I always say to people, even to my children, as long as silanga lipuma empuma lama, lia enchona lama, rest assured that God is still in charge. Yes, things may not be in a good place, but as long as the sun rises and there is sunset, that simply means God is still in charge. The only day where you can take a rope and hang yourself, it is the day lapo ilanga lizo puma empuma enchona langa lia empuma langa lapo ge I'm giving you the rights, you know to say ah who fed the one else is in dosia peto ya boni langa lipuma nda weni a wrong jengo ba lipuma nda wone wrong sibula kuri ischanga ni hiheri le hiheri le mwana mani ote kanta mbo wenda jane uti henga but as long as lipuma empuma langa. It simply means God is still in charge. He is still the ruler of the universe. Come and give God praise. There's no need for you to hang yourself. There's no need for you to lose hope. There's no need for you to give up. Hey, now Lena is on Kulam Dalangos, Nova Unkulungulu, Usahesi, Estalinsak. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how many, even the bishops and the pastors are backsliding. Does not matter. God is still in charge. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Does not matter the cost of living. God is still in charge. Yes. Does not matter who is still a president or who's going to be a president in South Africa. God is still in charge. Yes. Look at the person next to you and say, God is still in charge. Maybe you are here, you are watching at home, your husband left you with children and you don't know how am I going to get the next meal. Listen to me, I'm saying to you my dear, God, he's still in charge. He is the father of the orphans. He's the father, you know, even to a husband, to, the, to, to, the, to, to those who do not have a husband. Yeah. Even to the widows. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just say this to somebody, I just said it in my spirit. You are somewhere there, you are crying, you don't know how you're going to raise those children. Because God is going to be their father. Now, it's amazing how God operates. Look at the scripture in the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, from verse 4 to verse 9. It's a funny story if you don't understand. But remember, God was building a nation here. He was teaching people, giving them a structure because they didn't know who was God and they didn't understand governance. They didn't understand how to live life. Now, in the book of Numbers, this is the story of the children of Israel moving from Egypt to the promised land. In verse 4, it says, Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hall, taking the road to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom. So what is happening here, you know, uh, God made them to take the longer route. You know, the longer route because he wanted to deal with them with their attitude, okay? So in verse, in verse 1, it continues, it says, but the people grew impatient with the long journey. You understand? They grew impatient because the journey was too long. One translation, it says, the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. Verse 5 says, and they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? Okay? They complained. There is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. La Labati. And we hate this horrible man. I mean, you just said there is nothing to eat, but now you're referring to the man. And they're calling it horrible. Something that God has provided in the desert. When people lose patience, 
they say horrible things. That is why when you are angry and when you are tired, you are exhausted as a husband or wife. Be careful. Don't say a lot. I always try my best not to solve problems or to discuss with my wife after the last service. Imagine I'm preaching four times and after that I want to discuss matters at home. The problems why things are not working, it is because you want to deal with matters who cut in and you end up saying wrong things. I don't blame these guys. They were tired. Even what God has provided, they are calling it horrible. Really, can you say that to your leader and to God and say even what you have provided, it is horrible. And in verse 6 says, so the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and men were beaten and let me tell you, and they died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, the very same guy that we, they were criticizing, you know, they cried out to him, okay? They said, we have sinned by speaking against uh, 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 you and against the Lord. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, okay, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. Bamba, attach it to a pole. All who are beaten will live if they simply look at it. They will live if they look at it. Now, I want you to see something here. They prayed to God to say, please, please, Moses, tell this God to remove these poisonous snakes because these snakes are busy biting us and we are dying. Moses goes to God and says, Baba, remove these poisonous things. God says, mm -mm, I'm not going to remove them, but I'm going to make the replica. Moses, put the bronze snake, you know, on the pole. On the pole. I'm not going to remove the poisonous snake. But the principle is, those who look up, they will live. Yes. Isn't that amazing, Pastor Luan? That sometimes we pray to God to remove some stuff in our lives. And God says, eh, 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 eh. it's not going to work like that. As much as I want to remove these things, but you will never know me if I am God, if I remove things out of your way. I'm going to leave the poisonous snakes, but it is your role not to focus on the poisonous snake. It is your role not to focus on what is happening around you. The mess will be around. The poison will be around you. But you must do one thing. You must look up and leave. Yes, yes. And leave. Oh my goodness me. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Listen to me. There are many poisons around us. Poisons of betrayal. Poisons, you know, of offenses. Poisons of anger. Poisons of people who are plotting against you. They are there and you have been praying. I even hear Christian praying dangerous prayers. Kill them, Lord. Kill my husband. Kill him. No, no, no. He's not going to die. And we are one of the they live long. I'm a poison. They live long. Atingila. Uti Baba Aosam Susina. Atu Jehovah High Corn. Can you imagine these guys? They are crying poisonous snakes. Ziatla. Atu Jehovah. Nga pegila. Begale. My ways are not your ways. My ways are not your ways. You know, if God removes some other things, you will never know that he is God. You will never exalt him as the God, as the King of Kings. If what's going to happen with your faith? But today, you know why you've got a strong faith? You know why you have a strong faith? It is because you have faced some poisons. You have faced some disappointments. You have faced many things in life. Now you can stand and glorify his name and say he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Only people who can say that those who have overcome some stuff, you are able to say he's the Lord of Lords. Now, you are able to say he is God.
to Jehovah. I'm not going to remove them. They are here to stay. And your role is to look up. Is to look up. How many people have lost focus? And you know the beautiful thing here? When you read that scripture, it says, All who are beaten will live if they simply look up. It says, All. Does not matter if you are a vendor boy. It does not matter. Educated, rich, or not. It says all. All. If you look up, you will live. Now, Pastor Matebula, really, really a verse on the Easter about snakes? You see, that is how God operates, Basalwal. Ngulungulu, I mean, he would have, I even asked myself, Ngulungulu, I'll start fucking our angel and say, let them look up and see the angel and live. Uzo zongi zindo, you are looking at the bronze snake. You see, God wants to deal with your intelligence. God wants to deal with your thinking. God has a tendency of taking foolish things just to nullify your wisdom. And your understanding. Because he wants to deal with your attitude. Because while you are busy and say, Lord, why not an angel? It deals with your pride. It deals with your issues. Are you with me? Because God knows that our problem is our issues. And he says, I will just use foolish things. When you honor me by following foolish things. And then you will find love you'll find love. Many people have missed the grace of God. They have missed the grace and the love of God because they've allowed to stand in between them and God. And God was dealing with that here. But let's come back to the Easter. Because in the book of John chapter 3, John picks up this story. He tells us well, this was not just about the snake on the pole. This was the story of a prophecy that one day somebody will be hanged on the pole. Yeah. When you read John 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 14, and it says, and as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the son of man, which is the son of God, must be lifted up. Do you see now what I see? Must be lifted up. So that everyone, here comes that word again. So that everyone, everyone simply means all who believes in him will have eternal life. Can you see now what is happening now? John is taking it to another level. He says, no just leave, but this time, because you are looking up to the cross, when the Son of God is lifted up, and you look up, it says, all, everyone, if they believe, listen to me, I'm so glad that if they believe, it doesn't say it's if they pay so much. Yeah. Don't allow people by telling yeah. Anakai. You don't have to pay for this. Yeah. You don't need to pay money. Yeah. You don't need to offer a prophet anything. You don't need to, to, to lose something for this salvation. All that you need to do is to look up and believe that you are the son of the living God. You are Jesus, the only son of the living God. If you believe that, you will have eternal life. Now, Lalela. One translation put this in a beautiful way. It says, in the same way that Moses lifted the serpent in the desert so people could have something to see and then believe. It is necessary for the Son of Man, Son of God, to be lifted up. And everyone who looks up to him, Bamba, trusting and expected, will gain a real life. It says eternal life. Ah, is long, Basarwan. Niasaz is long. You will gain a real life. You know, when the Bible emphasizes that you will gain a real life, that means there's a life that is not real. If the Bible speaks about real, that means there's a fake. You know, there are many people who are thinking they are living a real life, yet they are living a fake. 
Can I tell you straight away in your face, my dear, even you at home, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you are just living a life. But if you have Jesus, you have a real life. And the Bible says eternal life. Praise the name of Jesus. And this life that we are talking about, Jesus gives you a real life while you are here. A real life while you are here. You enjoy a real life. It is not a fake, but it's a real life. And the real life does not depend on tangible things. The real life does not depend on what is happening around you. I may not even have things in my house. Things might be biting me, you know, left, right, and center. But listen to me, the real life you keep on focusing. You are saying, I know who I am. Not based on what I have, but based on what I received. You know, things that don't make me to be who I am. But Jesus has made me to be who I am. You can take everything, but with what I have in the inside of me, I still have life. As someone wrote a song, it says, you can take my car, you can take my house, you can take my family, but you cannot take Jesus that is in the inside of me. If I have Jesus, I have life. The question is, do you have a real life this morning? How's your life? Three things quickly. Three things quickly. When are you supposed to look up and live? That is the question that many people are asking. When am I supposed to look up and live? Number one, if you're writing down. When you are going through a wilderness experience or when you are in a wilderness season. A wilderness season is a season of dryness. It's a season of difficulty. It's a season of loneliness. It's a season of betrayal. It's a season where you feel there are no friends. It's a season where you feel alone. It's a season where you feel in darkness. A season where things that don't make sense. That's not give you to listen to a shangani. Have you ever been in that situation? It's when you are in the season of wilderness. Ulukisa kamona, husinye kamona, uyambeza, uyasembula. You have done everything for your husband. You have done everything for your wife. But they are still not satisfied. You don't know what else you must do. Look up. Look up. So you look up when you are in the wilderness experience. Number two, you need to look up when you are exhausted and when you are discouraged. You even ask yourself crazy questions. Sometimes it's so tough. Open the Oh, don't act holy on me. <laughs> don't act holy on me. Was this the one? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong. Don't leave that woman. You are just exhausted. You are just tired. I call him now, even Elijah, when he was exhausted and tired, he prayed a wrong prayer. Yeah. That is why when you are exhausted, you end up when it's wrong. Other people, they take advantage of you because you are exhausted. They know that when you are exhausted, you want to hear things about yourself. That is why the moment they say to you, you say, eh? because you are exhausted. There is no Gogo who is lawyering you. You are just tired. Just 
must look up. Look at the person next to you and say, look up. Look up and leave. When you are tired, don't look around. There will be no solution for you. You know, right? Look up unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And number three, when you are supposed, when are you supposed to look up? When you are facing adversity. When you are facing poisonous snakes. Don't even try to negotiate with poisonous snakes. Don't even try to get a reason. Why is this poisonous snake sing lumin? Don't even try. Even the snake is not seen a poison. I don't know what are the poisons next to you. Hallelujah. But you need to look up when you are facing adversity. I don't know what is a poison around you. Whatever the poison around you, don't concentrate on that poison. Don't focus on that poison. There will be no life in that poison. They don't need your energy. They don't need your attention. They don't need your time. It's just a waste of time to communicate and negotiate with the poisonous snake because by nature they are poisonous. Look at the person next to you and say, Luella, no. Look at the other one and say, no, hug, no. It can be cute, but no, hug, no. It can be beautiful, but no, hug, no. It can be small, but no, hug, no. Ah, it can dress like a king, but no, hug, no. It can dress like a sheep, but no, hug, no. It can dress and look handsome. Hey, it can drive a BMW, but no Don't negotiate and be tempted by snakes. Stauluma. And we come to the house of the Lord. You know what I'm talking about. Cross. Look up to the cross. Look up to the cross. I'm going to invite the team. I'm going to invite the team. We've got five minutes before we hand over to one gospel. Now listen to me. David is going through the same challenges. Come worship him. Things that are happening. And he writes this psalm in Psalm 121. Listen what he says. He's dealing with the very same thing that we are dealing with. Uti David, I refuse to look what is happening around. Uti, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I'll neither slumber nor sleep. The, the, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your strike you by day. No, the moon by night. Aren't you glad that you are serving this God who says, I will never allow the sun to strike you by day? The Lord says, I will never allow them. I will never allow them. Shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. La 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 la. Uti, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He may He preserve you at home from all evil. Haba no iba fika, mudi mabe li tohola ha ke. Uti, hova begi santa sake and preserve your life, and not just your life. May He preserve your soul. La 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 litini. The Lord shall preserve your going out. Coming in, ay 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 ay. Egungene ni wako, egungene ni wako. The Lord will preserve you. Egume ni wako. The Lord will preserve you. That is the God that I'm talking about. That may He preserves you. The Lord from this time forward, even forever, more. Just because you have lifted your eyes, may He preserves you. And not just you, and you and your children, 
and not just your children but your grandchildren your grand grandchildren let me tell you the decision that you are making today you know to honor him the Lord will lift you up the Lord will preserve you the Lord will protect your children the Lord will protect your grandchildren that is what I declare in the name of Jesus no weapon formed against you shall prosper you are blessed coming in you are blessed going out one thing that you need to do is to look up is to look up is to look up and is to look up and is to look up and look at the person next to you and say look up and leave would you please stand on your feet